Today is Thursday, April the 18th, 2013, and for your pleasure today, we're going to show you uh, the insides with some music played by a musician here in El Paso of a couple of beautiful Gretsch and a Supro. So uh, this is what they are in the beginning, and we'll, uh, we'll start showing you the insides, and uh, Doug will discuss them. They're his amplifiers, and uh, he knows them best. Uh, David, uh, apparently judging from the responses we've been getting to our uh, videos, people are interested in the old amps. And with all the emphasis and money being focused on the Fender amps, my preference actually is other brands of amps from that same period where you can get some really wonderful tone and a really nice uh, piece of equipment for a fraction of the cost. Uh, what we'll do now is go through each of these. They're, all three of these are made by Valco from Chicago, Illinois, back in the early 60s. And we'll go through and discuss each one of them. And then at the end, we'll play some music through all three. Okay, David, the first amp we're going to discuss here is going to be a Gretsch 6150. Uh, this particular one uh, is from uh, the uh, late in 1960. And it's, all of three of these amps are made by Valco. Valco was a huge company in Chicago many years ago that made, God, probably three quarters of all the amps in the United States. And uh, they would give them a different brands, like Gretsch, made, they were famous for guitars, but they had no facilities to make amps, so they turned to Valco to make amps for them, and they gave particular requirements of fanciness of, of them. The, the Gretsch Valco amps are among the nicest, fanciest, and most valuable of them all. On um, this particular one, you see they've got the, the nice logo here, original grill cloth, and a really neat covering. It's not just boring old Tolex, which is almost like uh, shelf paper. It's actually a vinyl that's textured with uh, little uh, like silvery highlights in it. Then there's a contrasting bead that goes around it. Uh, nice handle with a chrome edge. Really, really good quality stuff. Okay, we, if I turn it around, let's look. Oh, and here's the other thing that's inevitable on any Valco amp. And that is, they must have bought nine light years of gray zip wire because every one of these things has one of these crazy little uh, cords on it and plugs. I know the big uh, rush is to always change this to a three wire plug. I haven't on these because as you'll see, this is absolutely just about like new from the day it was made. And it works fine this way. Okay, we've got our control panel up here. Now this, um, chassis is almost identical to the Fender Champ chassis. In fact, all three of these are. We got two inputs and one is probably a little higher gain than the other. All we have is a volume. It's an on-off and volume knob here with the Gretsch logo on the knob, which is nice. We got some real classy pin striping here, uh, a pilot light, and the little fuse probably one, maybe one and a half amp fuse. Now I've already removed the screws back here, so we're going to pop this back off, hopefully without, oh, darn it, I left a screw. Could you stop? Okay, let's pop the back off this one, hopefully without doing too much damage. And look, utter simplicity in the circuit. Got a 5Y3 rectifier, 6V6 output tube, and a 12AX7 preamp that's shielded. Look at this, all that empty space. Um, you see the two inputs here, the input jacks, little volume control, uh, pilot light. Very simple. Now inside, a little deeper, uh, we've got a Jensen Alnico 8-inch speaker. It should say special design right here, but apparently that must have fallen off. That's about the only thing missing from this. 8-inch Jensen Alnico speaker, and then on the bottom on the Gretsch amps, they always stenciled in the model number, 6150, which is a big help, because on Valco amps sometimes it's hard to tell one from another. Then they also put this little tag back here with the code T4994, I have to get the bifocals out, 8. Uh, that can tell you the date, and when I looked that up in the Valco site, they said it was late 1960. So that's this beast. 
Very simple, very much like the Champ, uh, the Fender Champ. In fact, very similar tone, same type speaker, same tube complement. No tone control on this, if you notice. Strictly volume, on off. It, just utter simplicity, but in a very nice little package. And these, uh, in this kind of condition, probably run around 500 to $550 if you can find them in this kind of condition. Whereas a Champ uh, similar would probably be maybe two or three times as much. So these represent really quite a bargain for the same circuitry, same sound, same everything. Okay, number two on the hip parade, David, is a Gretsch uh, 6151. This one also dates from early 1960. Uh, we'll see the little metal plate on the back when I get it turned around. And uh, this one has a very stylish kind of an Art Deco cutout here with the giant logo. Once again, made by Valco, but using the highest grade of materials. Uh, really uh, detailed, beautiful uh, vinyl covering with the contrasting beads. Uh, wrap around, typical another Art Deco feature, wrap around on the speaker. Even though it's a tiny little 8 inch speaker, as you can see probably the outline of it here, it still gives the impression that it's real streamlined and there's more going on than really is. Okay, I'm going to turn this around. I didn't pull the back on this because the circuit's pretty much the same. Uh, it's just like, uh, you would think, like a Fender Champ. It's got the 6V6, the 5Y3, uh, 12AX7. Except this one, one bit of subtle difference is, has a tone control. We've got the bass and treble control here, and we've got the same type of on-off volume control that the other one had with the little Gretsch logos embossed, all part of it being kind of the probably the highest grade of a Valco amp. Also notice on the inputs, two that have more of a bass response and one that's more of a treble response. If you want clarity or if you want more like a rhythm uh, backing sound, you would go into the bass. Um, very simple pilot light, protective fuse, and the ubiquitous gray Valco cord. I wish I'd owned stock in the gray zip uh, line uh, industry back in the old days. This one has the unofficial plug on it, though. The plug on this one looked like it had been trampled by Clydesdales, and I, I replaced it, but I left the cord the same. I know it's blasphemy not to rip out all the filter capacitors and cord the day you get one, but this thing just plays perfectly, and unless I'm standing in the bathtub uh, fiddling with it, I just don't think I'm going to get electrocuted. Okay, if you look in here now, this has a little bit different speaker. It's 8-inch, but it's a Rolla speaker. The way you know that is the 285 code. The first three letters tell you what type of speaker it is. 285 is roll. A zero is the second digit of the date. This is 1960, so that's a zero. And 18 is it's the 18th week of 1960 that this was made. Very, very uh, early in the year. Uh, this 550 10 that's on the back of the speaker is a standard number I've seen on countless Valco amps. It's sort of like their part number for a speaker. Uh, and then in the bottom, and this is real snazzy, they stenciled in the 6151, so we know exactly what it is, and they put in their little metal plate, the little metal plate that has the, it's like a T35 on this one, and that tells you uh, exactly when it was made. And what's nice about the speaker code is the speaker code should agree with the amp a serial number code. And in this case, the amp serial number code says early 1960. The speaker is made in the 18th week of 1960. It all goes together. This is completely original and in good enough shape that you could almost sell it for new. A little bit of tarnish on the brass. And instead of the chrome wraparound, we've got kind of an anodized brass wraparound. So this amp I have a feeling costs more than the 6150, but probably not a lot more, maybe $20 more. This is more like the very early Princeton chassis that we used in the reverb video, our last video, uh, in which we had the single 6V6 Princeton chassis. Uh, and this is very much like that because it has the tone control. 
Okay, so this would be one step up. This is like a, not a very early Champ, but a very early Princeton. And a very nice amp to boot. Okay, and third on, the, on our list here of small compact amps is a Supro Model 1614 Spectator. Now, it's confusing because if you go look up in a book, Supro Spectator Amp, they have variations in this that look very different from it. It's the same chassis, but in different uh, cabinets with different colors. Some of them are two-tone, but I assure you that this is a Model 1614 Supro Spectator. Okay, now, Supro did not, when they had the amps made by Valco, they did not demand the ultra-high-grade wrapping uh, around the handle and the, the uh, fancy coverings and things of that sort. These amps, therefore, sold for a lower amount. Say if Gretsch is a Cadillac of amps, this would have been like the Oldsmobile or Buick. Okay, a step down. Now, it still has a really nice vinyl, but it's more like a gift wrapping paper or something. It's not paper. It is actually kind of a rubberized cloth, but it has a really neat kind of a, actually more of a 50s design to it. Uh, black flocked. This is just a piece of like screen from window screen that's been flocked with that. You spray it with a contact cement and put the black flocking on it. It's not a fancy piece of cloth, in other words. Um, then at the top we do have a nice contrasting band whereas the Gretsch had the little small piece of uh, cord that wrapped around. This is a band. These are the only flaws on it. Uh, there's kind of a dark area here and here and here and I do not know if it's a cigarette uh, or a chemical or somebody you know, was chewing tobacco or what in God's name. I wish they hadn't done it. But that's it. Otherwise we could pretty well sell this one for new too. But a couple little spots. Okay, we'd have to discount this one a little, I guess. Now, the dashboard on this is really neat, I think, because it has, it almost looks like a bird with wings, like an eagle, pinstriping. And that's actually, it appears to be painted on there because it has variations. It's almost, I don't want to say hand done, but it, it, it really looks sort of like it. We've got our instrument inputs, our microphone, which is usually a higher gain input. We've got our volume and our on-off switch is built into the volume control. There's no toggle here. Uh, tone, it's just like the last Gretsch amp. We actually have the tone control. Uh, pilot light and fuse. So all of this is pretty similar. It all came from Valco. And it um, has, because it has the tone control, this is more like the early Princeton chassis. Now when we look inside, guess what? There she be, the gray cord. and. Once again, uh, I know everybody wants to see the three-wire black type of cord, but, you know, I, I go back to the old school. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, and it ain't broke. This works perfectly. Um, same, if you've seen it, you've already seen it twice, here it is again. Okay, 5Y3, 6V6, 12AX7, parked way to the side so that it won't pick up. Uh, any sort of electromagnetic interference. Does that number look familiar? 550-10. On the speaker, it, to me, that's sort of uh, Valco speak for that's the speaker. And look down here, 285. Okay, we know it's a Rolla. See the 9? The speaker was made in 1959, the 40th week of 1959. Well, they made it in the 40th week, but according to the tag on the back, they sold it in the beginning of 1960. All of that makes good sense. Uh, this might have taken several weeks to get to the store, um, you know, so that there can be a little bit of difference between the part number and the actual completion number that's on it. Okay, now the other thing about this that is really spectacular that I'll share with you here is something that I rarely ever see. As many of these amps as I have had dealings with. In the bottom of that one, I almost fainted when I looked in and there's a piece of paper. It's the original amplifier schematic from Valco that was provided to the buyer. And the original Supro and National, if you look here, there, it shows Valco Manufacturing, Supro, and National Brands. This is the owner's manual 
for that app that came with it back in the beginning of 1960. The book was copyrighted in 1950. It gives an explanation of how to operate the amp, and uh, I'll go through it real quicker. We'll turn it. I've never seen one of these books before, so this was news to me too. How to connect your amplifier, stand in bathtub with plenty of water. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, maybe not, I don't know. Uh, that way they never had any return customers. Speaker. Things about it. Electric guitar chord. They elaborate on the obvious. But at least they had enough respect for the consumer to tell them, here's the fuse, change it if you, if you can. Nowadays, this stuff is made where you really aren't supposed to work on it. Everything's sealed up. Oh, this is your troubleshooting. So you don't bother them. You take care of it yourself. Shock precaution. Okay, back in the old days where when you got shocked, you didn't sue, okay? You just got up, dusted yourself off, and got shocked again. Excessive hum and noise. Well, actually, excessive noise is what these things are all about, but I think they mean bad noise. Okay, buzzes and rattles. And then who doesn't have plenty of those? Howling. Got a couple dogs in the backyard that that might apply to. Um, a word on amplifier repairs. And I don't even want to read that because I'm scared what they're going to tell me. And then here's what's really cute. The envelope, uh, an envelope containing the spare fuse. Now here's what's good about it. When the envelope's still sealed, what does that tell us? Nobody ever needed to get the spare fuse out, okay? So apparently this thing never had any electrical problems. Considering the condition of the amp, I don't think this thing was hardly ever used. But the documentation is just flawless on this. The condition is spectacular. Um, this one would probably, if you were to get one, I don't know that you could find one this nice, but if you got close, probably five to six hundred dollars worth. Again, like half to a third of what a uh, Fender Champ amp would cost. And a Fender Champ is not this fancy. So you can have all the, the tone, all the, the actually better looks and performance for a fraction of the cost. I just think these are just wonderful amplifiers, and that's why, I mean, I love Fenders. I would drive halfway across the country for a Fender amp, but when I can buy these for a fraction of the cost and, and really have a splendid instrument that I enjoy working on and, and playing through, this really seemed to me like the way to go. I've got a bunch more of them. We're going to bring them out each week in another video. Uh, we'll do uh, something like this on Nationals. Uh, I've got some on Oahu and some other crazy premieres and some other crazy amps. And we'll go through and see how they're like these or how they're different and what makes them special. And I hope you stay tuned. Thank you. All right. Go ahead. Ready? Ready. Go ahead. Okay. You're, go ahead and start.
it's okay. Here's a here's a national amp that uh, we're not going to oh. do too much with today, but I got to show you this thing. This is one that Doug and I will make a video of soon. And let me look. Let me show you the back of this of this beauty. Look at that. Those black plate RCA 606s, a pair of them. It looks all original. The chassis is chromed. Two big uh, 12 inch speakers. Even the upper chassis is plain. The upper chassis, it's chromed like the old Macintosh amps. I just had to had to make a, a quick one of this one right here. I've, About 70 watts. There you go. Isn't that magnificent. Both a bass and guitar amp. Don't see stuff like that made anymore, do you? Power <laughs> transformer. And an output over here, driving, I guess, this speaker. Same thing over there. There you go. 